Are injectable weight loss drugs like Ozempic, Wagovi, or Manjaro making you skinny fat? You're seeing the scale go down, but what if I told you that up to 40% of the weight loss could be muscle mass? That means a smaller body, but with less strength, less shape, and a slower metabolism. Let's talk about how to lose fat, not muscle, and stay strong and healthy through this process. I'm Julie Laurie, IFBB fitness pro and women's fitness expert, and over the last 20 years, I've worked with thousands of women around the world, helping them build lean muscle, lose body fat, and feel amazing at every stage of life. While I've never personally used a GLP-1, I have consulted with an endocrinologist and extensively studied the impacts these medications can have. Today, I wanna have a real, honest conversation about GLP-1 medications like Ozimbic, Zepbound, and Manjaro, and how they're changing the landscape of weight loss for women, especially those of us over 40. These medications are being prescribed more than ever before, and in many cases, they're working. They've helped people with obesity, insulin resistance, and chronic health conditions lose weight when nothing else has seemed to work. If your doctor has prescribed one of these medications for you and you're feeling hopeful for the first time in years, I absolutely support that. But here's what I don't want. I don't want you to lose weight at the expense of your muscle, your strength, or your metabolism. Because the truth is, these medications can put your body in a state of catabolism, breaking down lean tissue right alongside body fat. And that can leave you feeling weak and tired or softer than you expected, even after you've lost weight. This isn't about judgment and it's definitely not about fear. It's about knowledge and strategy so that you can protect the strength you have or even build more as the weight comes off for you. Because what you do while you're losing weight, how you train, how you eat, how you recover, that matters just as much as the number on the scale. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through several things. So why women are using GLP-1 and what they, why they're at higher risk of losing muscle, what the research says about body composition changes with these medications, and most importantly, what you can do about it. I'll share the exact strength training protocols, protein targets, and recovery strategies that I use with my online clients. Women just like you that wanna lose fat, stay strong, and feel confident in their bodies long after the weight is gone. Let's start by understanding what really happens behind the scenes when you're losing weight with a GLP-1. So this is all about what is being skinny fat and why that matters. I want to unpack that term, skinny fat. <laughs> it's a phrase maybe you've heard before, and while it might sound superficial or even a little insulting, I don't mean it that way. It's used to describe a very real and common issue, especially for women that are losing weight quickly with either extreme dieting or with medications like GLP-1s. Being skinny fat means that your body weight is lower, your clothes are fitting looser, the scale, it's moving in what it feels like the right direction, but your body fat percentage is still high because you've lost too much lean mass. That's your muscle. Think about it this way. Your body has shrunk, you've, but you've lost strength in the firm structure that's underneath. Muscle gives your body that shape, definition, and tone. It what, it's what creates curves in all the right places. When that muscle goes away, what's left behind can be softer and less defined, even though you're at a lower weight. But here's what's even more important than that. This is not just about the aesthetics. This is about your health, about maintaining your results for the long term. Because when you end up losing muscle mass along with body fat, your metabolism is gonna get slower your blood sugar regulation actually gets worse. Your bone density can decline. And then things like your posture, your balance, your joint health, those all can suffer. And here's something that a lot of people don't realize. Muscle, it's active tissue metabolically. It burns calories even when you're totally at rest doing nothing. <laughs> so when you lose muscle, your daily calories 
burn, that's gonna go down even if you're doing the same workouts and eating the same meals. That means that once you come off the medications, you could actually regain weight faster or than if you were, even if you're trying to eat well still. So yes, we care about how you look, but we also care about your function, how your body moves, your strength, your energy, and most importantly, your ability to maintain the results that you've achieved. That's why this is such an important conversation. It's not about just getting smaller. It's about getting stronger and healthier. I want you to feel great in your body and lean muscle is going to help with that. So let's get into the science behind what is actually happening to your body when you're using a GLP-1 medication like Ozempic, Weovi, Manjaro, or Zepbound. These drugs work by mimicking a hormone your body naturally makes, GLP-1, or glucon-like peptide 1. That hormone slows gastric emptying, it's going to reduce your appetite, and it's going to increase feelings of fullness. So, in simple terms, you feel satisfied with less food, and as a result, you take in fewer calories. Now, less food equals weight loss, right? Yes. But what matters is the kind of weight that you're, when your calorie intake drops significantly, especially if you're not eating as much protein or lifting weights, your body doesn't just burn fat. It starts to break down your muscle to use that as energy. That's called catabolism and it's a survival response. And we're seeing this play out more and more in the research. In the step one trial, which studied people using semaglutide, that's the compound in Ozimbic, Participants lost an average of 33 pounds over 68 weeks. But here's the problem. Around 39% of that weight loss came from lean mass, which includes muscle. Another 2023 study confirmed the same thing. People using GLP-1s saw a dramatic drop in their fat-free mass, especially if they weren't doing resistance training or following a structured nutrition plan and getting enough protein. So that muscle mass is what's decreasing a lot of times along with body fat. And let me tell you, in my experience as an online fitness and nutrition coach, this isn't just happening in clinical trials. I've seen it in real life too. Women come to me after using these medications and they're shocked at how weak and soft they feel, even if they're 20, 30, even 50 pounds lighter. And I always say, it's not your fault, but it is something that we can take charge of starting right now. If you want fat loss, not just weight loss, you have to take a different approach. That means prioritizing strength training, hitting your protein targets, and making sure that your body has the support it needs to hold on to muscle while you're losing body fat. Oh, and before we dive into the exact strategies that I use with my clients, let me quickly say this. If this video is resonating with you, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I create science-backed real-world fitness content specifically for women over 40, and I'd love to share it with you. And if you currently, if you're using a GLP-1 medication like Ozimbic or Manjaro, leave a comment below. I want to hear what your experience is and whether it's going great or if you're struggling with maintaining some of your strength. So why is this so important, especially for those of us over 40 or like me over 50 and in perimenopause or menopause? Because even without GLP-1 medications in the mix, we're already up against some major biological changes. Starting around our late 30s and early 40s, your body naturally begins to lose muscle mass. It's a process called sarcopenia. And in the hormone shifts of perimenopause and menopause, especially that drop in estrogen, that starts to speed up muscle loss even faster. Estrogen isn't just about reproductive health. It actually supports your muscle maintenance, bone density, and helps with recovery. So when estrogen goes down, it becomes harder to hold on to your lean muscle even if your weight is the same. Now, layer in the appetite suppression from the GLP-1s, and suddenly you're eating less food, getting less protein, and if you're not training at all with intensity, then that's the perfect storm for losing muscle mass. Unfortunately, it's one of the biggest reasons that women come to me and say things like, you know, I've lost weight, 
but I still don't feel strong and I don't look the way I really hoped I would. It's not that you're failing, it's that your body is adapting to that lack of input. Here's the good news though, we can reverse this process. And if you're still in the process of losing weight and taking the GLP-1, we can stop it from happening in the first place. So how are we gonna stay strong, get lean, and be really healthy with a strong metabolism with a GLP-1? You know, we've talked about the risks, now I wanna talk about the solutions so you can actually stay strong and get to where you feel amazing. We're gonna preserve your lean mass. I want you to feel good in your body and to be at the weight that you're most comfortable with. So here are three key takeaways that I really want you to focus on through this process. Strength training, protein intake, and recovery. Okay, I'm gonna break each one of these down. I want you to strength train with intention three to four times a week. This is not optional. If you wanna keep your muscle, your body has to have that stimulus and we need to do it with resistance training. Now, I'm not talking about spending hours in the gym or doing some kind of complex routines, but you do need to challenge your muscles with progressive overload and resistance, meaning that over time, you're lifting heavier weights and or you're doing more reps. Focus on compound movements. Those are the big ones that hit multiple muscle groups. So for your legs and your glutes, I like things like squats or deadlifts and lunges. For your upper body, overhead presses, pull downs, or chest presses. If you're newer to lifting, you can start with two to three sessions per week, each of those being about 30 to 45 minutes. That's all you really need to start. If you've been consistent with strength training and you're ready to take things to the next level, adding in four or five strength training a week with a mix of upper and lower body is gonna be so important. So this isn't about becoming a bodybuilder, it's about adding function and stoking your metabolic engine. That's where I see women regain the most confidence when we feel strong again. The second is hitting protein goals. So 25 to 30 grams of protein per meal. The GLP-1s are blunting your appetite, and when you're not hungry, it's easy to skip meals or a snack on whatever's handy. But your body really needs muscle at this point. Even if you're eating fewer total calories, you have to prioritize protein. So here's the sweet spot. I want you to aim for 0.8 to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight, and you gotta spread that throughout the day. Usually that works out to about 25 to 35 grams of protein at each of your meals. At least that's what happens for most of the women I work with. If your appetite is low, focus on easy digesting, high protein options like a shake, ultimate muscle protein from Beverly is what I personally use and love. Greek yogurt, eggs, cottage cheese, chicken, fish, those are all great healthy options. Since your appetite is lower, I suggest uh, focusing on four or so smaller meals spread throughout the day to make sure you're hitting your protein with each of those meals. Every gram matters when you're trying to preserve your lean tissue. So muscle isn't built in the gym. It's built during recovery. I don't want you to want to underestimate the power of the basics. Getting seven to nine hours of quality sleep is every night, staying hydrated with at least half your body weight in ounces of water. I aim for a gallon a day. So I keep your body moving outside of just workouts too. So walking, stretching, staying active, it's gonna help with circulation, reduce soreness, and help regulate your appetite and your blood sugar, which are so important with that recovery portion. And yes, walking does count. I want you to get lots of steps in each day. So strength training, but also that recovery portion. And we're gonna watch more than just the scale. Now, this might be one of the most important mind shifts I want you to make on this journey. Stop letting the scale be the only measure of success. I get it. It's great to see a number move when it hasn't in the past. And that gives you that immediate feedback that something's happening, right? It tells you almost nothing though about what's actually happening to your body recomposition. When you're using the GLP-1 and the weight starts to come off fast, it's tempting to get super excited about that number, um, especially since it might have been years since you've seen that change. But here's the truth, losing 20 pounds of fat is great. Losing 10 pounds of fat and 10 pounds of muscle, that's a problem. So instead of just tracking weight itself, 
I want you to track things that are going to reflect the progress and help us understand if you're holding that lean tissue. So take progress photos every two to four weeks. Those are going to show the changes more than the scale ever will. So your definition, your skin tone, your posture. Do actual physical body measurements. So your waist, hips, thighs, inches coming off there as well are going to be huge for you. And then most importantly, strength markers. Are you lifting more? Are you doing more reps? Are you feeling stronger throughout your every day? Those are indicators that you're building muscle. And then finally, what is your energy and your recovery like? Are you sleeping better? Is your body bouncing back a little more easily? These are signs that what you're doing is working, not just for weight loss, but for health, strength, and sustainability. So yes, use the scale if you want to, but don't let that have the final say. It's not just about shrinking your body. It's building one that supports the life you want. Here's the bottom line. GLP-1s can be powerful tools in your weight loss journey, but they are just that, a tool. They're not a magic fix, and they're not a replacement for strength training, protein, and the kind of support that helps you, keeps the weight off long-term. You deserve more than just a smaller number on the scale or a skinny, fat body. You deserve to feel strong and energized and confident. You want your body to truly support you, and I want this weight to stay off forever. That's exactly what I help women do in my online coaching program. Whether currently you're using a GLP-1 medication or navigating your life after, I can help you create training and nutrition plans tailored specifically to you and your body so you can lose fat, build muscle, and feel in control again. If you want that support from someone who understands the science and the real life challenges, I'm here to help. In the show notes, I'll put a link to my site, but you can visit julielaurie.com to learn more about if working with me is a good option for you. I'd love to help you feel stronger, healthy, and confident.